Good morning, Scotland. Good morning, social media land. Welcome to Sunday. It is gorgeous this morning. It is not cold, it is not windy. There's a little gentle breeze as you can hear in the microphone. And my street is nice and quiet. I like it, I like it a lot. So I'm going to the recycling centre just now and a bit of shopping and another bit of shopping. And I want to get back home before quarter past nine to cook some nice breakfast for the kids. But I wanted to talk to you about recycling. We have three types of trash can refuse bins that we use in Edinburgh and they are all for different purposes and we're all for recycling right on save the planet and all that crap okay however let's take a look at them these brown ones they're used for garden refuse like if you cut the grass okay you want to be putting your grass cuttings in there but only if you've paid extra for the Edinburgh Council to pick them up. These green ones are purely for recycling, purely for recycling, right? And they get picked up every two weeks. You put your plastics, your cardboard, shit like that in there. Okay, all the way down. We've got like wads and a look. This one's full. That is for all your stuff, like your packaging of your foodstuffs and everything like that. And then anything that is not recyclable goes in the grey ones. Oh my word, it's almost full already. Now, I don't have a problem with recycling. I don't have a problem with mixing it about and shoving it in the right bin. What I have a problem with is the time that that takes sometimes. A little bit every day, yeah, saving the planet and everything. But there's more that can be done, a lot more that can be done. And it's not at the consumer end, it's at the industrial end. When you look at the size of the trash cans that I've got, right? I don't know if I mentioned this when I was showing you the sizes of them. But uh, they get emptied, the green ones, the recycling ones, and the grey ones, the, the non-recyclable stuff that goes to a landfill. They get emptied every two weeks, right? And what the, the government expect from us is to be able to recycle and fill our stuff for that. Now, for bigger families, that you get bigger grey bits, you know, that's fine, that's cool. I don't have one of those yet, alright? So from my point of view, every two weeks I am going to the recycling centre. I don't mind doing that. But there has to be a better way. There has to be a way where... Why is it coming to the, the, the end consumer? Why is, it, why is it the man in the street? We have to do our bit, yeah, I totally get that. We have to do our bit. But why is it the man in the street that always has to pick up there's a plant in this world, uh, this plant, some people call it God's plant, you know, it's a gift of a plant that you can, in Scotland alone, on our not so fertile land, in parts of the country, we could have maybe two or three crops of this plant during the summer. You know, we could plant it early spring and by the time autumn comes, we'd have two or three crops of it. This plant, when you harvest it, puts all the nitrates that it's taken back into the soil in the form of its roots rotting down. This plant, when um, it's growing, absorbs, I think it's two or three times more carbon dioxide than most other crops do takes less water to grow and its fibres can be broken down to make thousands of products, thousands of products. Okay, this plant also produces its own oil and from this oil, this plant, this plant's oil, you can create plastics that are biodegradable, bioplastics. 
biodegrad can I say that again? Biodegradable plastic. Can you imagine a landfill site or a biotech company, right? Collecting all of your plastic, 100% biodegradable plastic, because that's all, say, a country used, and condensing it down into a biomass generator and using that biomass to create electricity. One eternity later. That's a no brainer! Oh, by the way, just so you know, right, this miracle plant is industrial hemp. Okay, so we are pulling up into the recycling centre and uh, it's quite quiet at this time of the morning, which is great. But it's a very well organised place, it does everything from used engine oil, to tyres, to electrical appliances, everything you can possibly imagine. And I find that uh, you know, quite sort of uh, liberating. It's good for, good for the soul to know that we have a place like this. But again, why do we need to do this? Why is it that we need to uh, get this done the way that it is? <laughs> Recycling's one thing, but do you know something that powers the bee can do a crap load more? Uh, if, you, if you think about it, how many people go and buy from you know, big supermarkets every day? Millions, millions. And the big supermarkets themselves have their own products, so just let's just take their products first. Uh, there's a ridiculous amount of plastic. Uh, they like to stroke their own egos by saying, you know, we're using less plastic. Well, why just not use plastic that's made from oil let's make it from hemp oil let's make it biodegradable let's make it like better for the environment and have specific landfill sites where this stuff can turn to gas like biomass gas okay and we can capture that and then use that to power <laughs> Take a look solely at the freezer aisle, just the freezer aisle, and check out the amount of plastic. In the grand scheme of things, one or Two consumers don't actually use that much plastic, right? So, like, you've got like a pack of cauliflower, or a bag of sweet corn, or peas, or something that you would use for um, like a meal. However, when you multiply that by the entirety of a city, or the entirety of um, like a country, that's tons and tons of plastic, tons of it. And if that was all made with hemp oil plastic, biodegradable plastic, wow. Oh, it's a bit windy now, it's no good. 
I cannot hold my mic, so I hope you can hear me. It's not up to the government to change. It's not up to the world to change. It's up to you to change the world. That's what it boils down to. Nobody is going to get off the backside and spoon feed you a better planet. Okay, That's what it boils down to. The people that, that run the world don't give two hoots about you, your family and the planet. And if they did, they would do more. They would do more. Okay, I like to think, we all like to think that we do our little bit, but we don't. Okay, politically, we need to do more. Because the moment that the powers that be realise that the actual uh, energy of the, the planet comes from you guys, then uh, they're going to start to wake up and do positive things, better things for you, better things for me, better things for your kids. And uh, that's what it boils down to. At the end of the day, they won't change because they're lazy. You won't change because you're complacent. I won't change because I'm in the same bracket as you. You know? What can I say? It's a bit insane. But we'll get there. When we don't have any polar ice caps anymore, when we don't have any trees anymore, when the, the elite are living in bunkers like troglodytes under the ground anymore, etc, etc. That's what I say. Find someone who can do it. Projects from the future here, that tapping and vibrating sound you can hear as I politely soliloquy my wonderful day of recycling is the replacement for my cradle which my phone sits in on my windscreen. Yes, it broke as I am about to show you. Speaking of recycling, my window mount broke. to buy another one and it's not as nice as this little one I like this one I had this one for such a long time it was part I can't I can't put this up any further you know that so you get to see all this of me instead of just my face <sighs> never mind and that is the reason why the sound towards the end of today's vlog is absolutely garbage we will now return with the knowledge that I actually have sourced the same one as I used to use in the car when I was travelling about vlogging as I drove. Yes, I have the same one, but unfortunately, it will not be ready for the rest of this video, as this particular voiceover was done a day later in the future. We shall now return to the properly broadcasted vlog. I think that we've touched on quite a lot of things which are very important. Thank you, sir. There's a gentleman in the middle of the road here. Good man. I think we've touched on... We've done quite a lot today. An awful lot already, and it's not even 10, 10 a.m. We've done the shopping. We've been to the recycling centre. We've made this vlog. We've been bought a very disappointing window mount. We were caught in the sunshine with no backlighting, so I looked like I'm on fire. But I think the most important thing that we've talked about is uh, the ability to recycle and why it you know, should be the manufacturer that makes more of an effort than the consumer. You know, it's down to the profit margins of all these big organisations not to do the right thing. And it's up to us to pick up the pieces. And when you're picking up the pieces, 
you're never ever going to be able to live your life because you're too busy picking up those pieces. We need to learn to live sustainably as a, as a, as a, a civilization, as a global civilization. It's something that's totally vital. We're going to destroy ourselves otherwise. We need to grow hemp. We need to, to change the way that we're doing stuff. You know, it's the worst that can happen. You know, we don't have a lot of time left. Science says one thing, believers say another thing, other science says another thing. Who cares? The worst that can happen is we can have a clean planet. And that's it. That is the worst case scenario. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. <laughs>